Hey guys, this is Rock King 3, being out of live commentary, Forza 5. And uh, I wanted to put this into my parts and tune area of my videos. This is, does not have a car involved into it, so this is not an actual car parts and tune. But this is kind of a... I should, probably should have done this at the beginning and kind of preface what I was going to do with the parts and tune. There are some assumptions here that I'm making um, that you guys know about me and how I race, but um, I was talking to one of our new friends this past week and I and I didn't even dawn on me that people weren't necessarily using the same setup that I was from an assist perspective and it's not that I didn't realize that is that I didn't realize that how much it would make a difference so let me explain to you guys um, how, how I run and then we'll talk about each one individually and want to talk about these a little bit so I use the braking line only um, and that is it's, it, it is not necessarily so I know the tracks pretty well at this point they're not necessarily to help with that but it helps me understand with which car I have when I start braking sometimes I brake in the yellow sometimes I brake two triangles in the yellow sometimes I brake two into the red um, instead of finding a mark on the track I use those lines sometimes to, to remind me either how early I brake or how late I brake depending on what car I'm in um, so I'm using the suggested line for braking only. Um, I am using um, the braking. I have ABS off. Um, I know a lot of you guys probably still use ABS, and I think that's fine. But one thing to realize when I'm giving you guys stats on as far as braking line goes or as far as a brake pressure goes, that is based off of the ABS being off. So a lot of times you can see with the ABS, I think people generally have around 110%. Um, like 105 to 110 percent with the ABS, I run mine probably between 120 and 180 at this point with the ABS off. Um, braking is something that took me a couple days to get down. Um, you have to be really soft with the trigger. I used to be either full gas or full brake, and now I've kind of feathered both of them a little bit. Um, I'm really soft on the brakes, and I try to do a lot more control with the uh, with the gas on the trigger. Um, and, and I guess I should even back up even further. I use a controller. I don't use a steering wheel. Um, so hopefully this all makes sense once it's all out there. Steering, um, I've never tried simulation. I've heard that that is not something that's very easy. So I stay with the normal steering. That works really well for the controller. I think the other steering is more for the steering wheel. Um, it kind of overreacts as you turn the steering wheel you have a longer distance to go from full left to full right or full right to full left and I think it helps you along the way um, to kind of compensate like what we can do on a controller because it's so easy to flick a thumb left and right um, I do not use trash control I had trash control on this last race and I could not figure out for life of me why I had it on um, so trash control is something that you can choose to use for me it actually slows me down because if i'm pushing the car too hard and the trash control kicks in a lot it just makes for slower acceleration if i have trash control off and i go into a turn too fast i know i'm going to peel the wheels over i'm going to slide it out a little bit so for me if i have it off i tend to go through the curves smoother but then I have full power available once I hit the gas again so it's kind of that concept where slower is a little bit faster <clears throat> I don't use uh, stability at all um, I think that again is maybe for the higher class cars um, I don't race a lot at R, S or A class races oh, excuse me um, but I think that might be more for those higher ones so again the things I'm giving you um, the cars that I give you, I am not running traction control or stability on. If I do run traction control, I will definitely say that in the video, um, but I do not run that normally. Um, I shift with the manual with clutch, and to me, this is one of the most important things. And I'm going to take you to another screen here to show you one of my fastest cars that I've ever built that's done really well on the track. Um, so let's go over to that here in a second. And then I don't do anything with damage. I just leave that cosmetic... Um, I suppose I could use a 10%, but um, I really don't see the need for that. So I just leave that at zero. Um, that way when I'm lapping cars, I don't worry about uh, tire damage or wearing out or fuel or anything like that. Not that I run that many laps, but um, but back to the most important one, it's going to be shifting. So let's go back into, I use manual with clutch for the record. And let's go back into the cars that I have. 
and I want to pull out this B class. This has been a really fast car for me, and there it is. <clears throat> My Mercedes 190E. So when I do some certain upgrades, I can manipulate the power band of engines. So I had, and, and this is why this all came up, is because a friend of mine, uh, a new friend of mine on Xbox said that he had a hard time getting this car, or this this type of configuration, it was actually a different car that I'd given out, um, a hard time accelerating through up a hill. And I'm like, that is crazy. This car is just so fast, it goes up the hill so hard, I have a hard time believing that it couldn't. Well, it dawned on me that he was using the automatic transmission. And uh, this is the engine that I'm talking about right here. So the power band of this engine right here is very specifically between 4,000 RPMs and 5,700 RPMs. If you're outside of that, you're either losing horsepower or you're losing horsepower and torque. So this one's a really odd engine because that torque line starts so early. But you can see early that that horsepower is pretty low. So you really want to get that best band between like 4,000 and 5,700 RPMs. Well, with an automatic transmission, it's probably trying to go all the way up to 5, 6, 7,000 RPMs, 6,500 RPMs, and then shifting. So he's, he's having a problem right after he gets that 5,700. It just starts kind of slowly getting up in RPMs, and then when it probably shifts for him, it probably goes really fast again. But the problem is there's such a dead spot in there. So if I was using an automatic transmission, you know, I would probably use something that had more of a bandwidth like this so that even though it shifts a little bit early, at least by giving it the most RPMs in the shift mode, it'll have a lot of horsepower. That, again, would be another really good one for an automatic transmission. Now, if you have a manual transmission or like what I use with the manual with clutch, and you use this engine, this is the engine that gives you the most, most horsepower for the PI. So if I actually go to this one, you can see that this one is minus 40 horsepower. And on the right side, I only lose 4 PI. So there's a big difference there. I'm getting 40 horsepower with this engine for only 4 PI. So for someone with a manual transmission or somebody with a manual with clutch, this is huge. You're getting a lot of horsepower for not putting a lot of PI on there. Now, you get a lot of early torque, too, so you also have to be mindful of the tire spinning a lot. But, again, this goes back to the transmission piece. This is huge. So, <clears throat> I just wanted to put the record out there, what I'm using, what I'm using it for, and how I build things might affect what you're using. So, keep that in mind. So, if you have a car like this, you may want to give up the 40 horsepower if you really want to drive an automatic and use this street powertrain instead of this first one here. Use the second one there. So keep that in mind when I build these out. And I'm sorry I didn't notice that before, but it was just a conversation. I was like, it didn't dawn on me. Why was that car giving you problems going up a hill? Well, it's because you were using this engine with an automatic transmission. So I apologize for maybe not giving enough information, but hopefully that straightens some of that out. Um, <clears throat> overall, I would make a suggestion to anybody that wants to get really good times on this on this race game to try to do something very similar with the assist that I have set up. It does take a little bit to get used to for the braking. Braking you have to be really soft with. Um, not having traction control, and why is that back on? Um, having traction control off, having stability off, um, doing shifting with manual with clutch, those things are really huge to making really good times. Um, manual is a really good upgrade from automatic, but manual with clutch is another big auto upgrade from the manual. And I don't know if that's true for 100% of the cars, but almost all of them shift faster and don't slow down when you shift up with the manual with clutch. So I know there's some cars in the higher ranks that might be different in the R class or in the race classes or whatever. Um, but I want to set that record straight. If you guys have any questions about what I've said today, go ahead and throw some questions my way. I'll be glad to answer it. Um, other than that, good luck. Keep trying to run without more assist if you can. 
and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for listening. Later.